You got enough skills now to program a basic kinetic servo application. But let's talk about things that should be in our program to make them easier to troubleshoot. As I get to look at a lot of you guys' programs, and when they work good, they work good. But when they don't work good, it's a lot of hurdles to overcome to get the machine going. But we wanted to let the operator know why it's not working. So right now, if we review our program, we've got the servo on. Well, before we can turn the servo on, though, we got to have the servo enable. And before we can actually jog, we got to have the servo on. But so what order and how do we indicate these things? So in this video, let's talk about how we can make these easier to troubleshoot. And let's go ahead and tackle error 82 first, because by far that's the most common one. In fact, let's go ahead and try to turn our servo on. Let's right click and servo on. We toggled a bit and we get an error. So we're gonna right click our left axis MSO, monitor, and we go in there. And there's that pesky error 82, and it is. It's the most common error you get. And while there are many reasons you can get this error, the two most common ones are we don't have an enable output, which is output four, or we don't have our safe torque off, which means something is wrong for safety circuit. And if we go into our quick view over here, which, which if you don't remember how to do, by default it's hidden. Just right click any of the white space in your controller organizer and show quick view. Then right now we have two start inhibits. We have that enable input, which comes from output four. And then we have our safe torque off, which is because the red mushroom is pressed. And we can find both of those tags in our controller tags. The easiest way to get there is to right click your left axis and let's monitor axis tag. And that's gonna take us right to it. And we're looking for the axis enable input inhibit. And if we go down to axis, and then there is the axis enable input. And the other one is the safe torque off inhibit. And if we go down, then there's our safe torque off inhibit input. And since those are the two most common ones, let's use those bits to let the operator know why the servo won't turn on. So let's start with our red mushroom or a safe torque off and let's try to work these in priority because also on a lot of your machines i see where when something goes wrong there's like 20 alarms well okay which one do i need to go work on first because chances are there's one that we need to go fix and that would make the rest of them disappear so at least right now i'm thinking probably the first one is the safe torque off and let's make the safe torque off turn on the red light. And in fact, let's, let's organize our code a little bit more because even now, right now we have right axis and we've kind of got these, this output over here and we got left axis and, you know, we dropped this output over here. Is let's make a subroutine just for our output. So let's right click our main program, add new routine. And I'm gonna call this my outputs. And we're gonna go into our left axis and let's right click that enable rung that we have right now, and we wanna cut that rung. And notice when we do that, it flags it for deletion. And then we can go over to our outputs, and we can right click, and we can paste it. And then let's go into our right axis, and we'll right click the enable out of it, cut rung, and we'll go to our outputs, and let's right click, and we will paste it. All right, then let's go find the safe torque off. And let's bring down a go look for a one, examine on, and still over in our controller tags, we have highlighted the left axis safe torque off inhibit. So we're just gonna highlight that. And we will right click copy. And then we'll go back to our output routine. And we're just gonna paste that in. Now we want to turn on the red light with that. So we'll bring an output energized down and we're going to be looking at local colon one colon O dot data and the red light from our getting started exercise was output two. Now we wanted to turn on if the left axis safe torque off inhibit is a one and then or and that's you know remember ands are going to be things in series if we say or when we're trying to talk out when we want something to happen when we say the word or that means we're gonna to wanna to branch. So it'll be or, and actually since it's so close, we're just gonna copy that instruction and we'll paste it right there. And we actually don't even have to use our arrows. We can just highlight left, 
type right, and that's going to make it where our red light comes on if either of those conditions are met. So let's finalize that. And our red light does not come on because we added that output routine, but we didn't make a JSR to go look at it. And this is why I always drill into the technicians that come to my class. Be paying attention for these green bars on the left and right side. They don't seem that important until they're not there. And we can go over to our in program control category, find our output, and we're just gonna remove these parameters because we're not using them and finalize that. And when we do, our red light comes on. We pull out our red mushroom button. That's gonna clear our safe tark off issue. After that, let's think about what is the next condition that'll keep us from running. So after our safe torque off is good, the next thing is this enable output from our PLC. And when would we want to enable it? Well, I'll tell you what, earlier, remember we had it hardwired so that switch one was the enable? That was kind of nice. So let's put it back that way, but let's do it in the PLC program. And we're going to do this in our output routine because we already have those two outputs here. And remember I told you that later on we would come back and do something with these? Well, now's the time. So we're going to start our rung at it. And we want to enable these when switch one is to the right. And it'll have a value of one when it's to the right. So we're just gonna go up and find local colon one colon I data and four, that's switch one. And we'll start our wrong edit on the right servo as well. And bring it down and go ahead and finalize that. And now we switch which one to the left. Output four and output five both come on. And if we click on our left axis, now its axis state is simply stopped. And the right axis state is also simply stopped. So we're ready for our MSO command. So if we go over to our left axis and we go to the top, here's that MSO command. And right now we have left servo on it. Well, realistically, I want to turn my servo on at the same time, I do that enable. Now, here's the issue that causes people a lot of pitfalls is if we simply do both actions at the exact same time, we can end up with a fault because this has to be on for that MSO to work. Otherwise, we get the error 82. So we need to make sure that we are getting that enable input before we try to do this. And we're going to do that with the axis enable input that we're getting back from it. Because if I switch switch one back and forth, that's how we're getting the feedback. So when it needs to be enabled, it's a one. When we're in the good position, it's a zero. So we're going to look for a zero right here on this. I'm going to go ahead and right click and copy that tag. And we'll go over to our left axis and we're going to start a rung edit. And so first, this needs to be a go look for a zero exam in office instead of a go look for a one. I could drag that down and do that, or I can simply hit the shape and you'll see a menu come up and I can get the go look for a zero exam and off right there. And then still in my clipboard, I have that tag name. So we're just going to right click, paste, and that's when we're going to enable this. We'll finalize that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch switch one off, which will turn that off. And now we're gonna turn it right back on. And that did enable the axis. And if I try to turn it, I've got some resistance on the left axis, whereas the right one is freewheeling right now. So that will take care of turning our servo on. And we're simply gonna right click and we're going to copy that instruction. And we're gonna go over to our right axis and go up to rung zero. And we're gonna paste that in and delete the right servo. And we'll just change this from the left axis to the right axis and finalize that. Switch switch one off and one that disables this right away. Switch it back on. And now I have resistance on both of them. Okay. Well, I should have resistance on both of them, but for some reason the left axis didn't work. Let's go figure out why. Click up on our left axis and we did get an error. So let's right click our left axis MSO. And we're going to go to monitor 
And we have an error. Okay, we have a different error. Hank Prune just the other day, he posted a meme on LinkedIn that, you know, sometimes as a programmer, progress is just getting to another error. And if you work at the kinetics much, progress is getting us away from error 82. Let's figure out what error 20 is. To find that out, we're going to go back to our left axis subroutine and we're going to right click the MSO, go to instruction help, and go to the bottom. And we'll have our motion error codes. And if we look at error code number 20, it says the axis is in a faulted state. Okay, now I'm not sure how I faulted that axis, but this brings up a very good point. Oh, I do know how I faulted the axis. We still had a motion command going on it. We had never issued a stop command and I turned it. Before we enable this, we need to make sure we're not faulted. So let's go see if we can find a fault bit. Now that, now that I'm looking for it, I can see the little yellow microscopic triangle going down through here. And there it says physical axis fault. So that's the tag we're probably looking for. So let's right click our left axis and monitor it. And let's go down to the P's and see if we see our physical axis fault. And right there it is. So if we have a physical axis fault, then two things. We definitely do not want to enable our servo. And also, we probably need to indicate that we have an access fault. And honestly, I probably would use the red for the access fault. But since we're kind of just trying to isolate and understand things, let's go ahead and use the yellow to signal that we have an access fault. And we're going to do that in our output routine. Let's go ahead and bring down a new rung. In fact, I'm going to bring it down to the top because I kind of like to keep my outputs in the order. I think it makes it easier to troubleshoot later on. And we'll go over to our favorites and we're going to put a examine on, go look for a one. And still in my controller tags, we're looking at it there. We want this left axis fault and we're going to put that there. And then we're going to bring down an output energize. And we're going to be looking for local colon one colon o dot data dot one, which remember we can just click on something if it's similar to it, bring it up. And now I can just change that to a one and that's going to be the yellow light. Now I want this to turn on if we have a left axis fault or a right fault. And that or is the magical word when we say or. That's when we want this branch here. We'll copy this instruction and we're going to paste it in that lower branch. And we're going to change this to right. And when we finalize that, we're going to get a yellow light. And this is where I see a lot of programmers get to is we have a light to indicate it. but what if you're remotely troubleshooting this and you're trying to figure it out? We may not think to go, well, let's go see what the yellow light is. So we can do a little bit more to our code to make it easier to troubleshoot later on. Let's go back to our left axis. And we know we do not want to enable this if we're faulted. So even though function-wise, it's just going to prevent us from getting this error code, if we start a wrong edit here and we put a go look for a zero, that the left axis dot physical axis fault, then that's going to let me know when I go here why my servo won't turn on. And so now I would know I need to reset my servo. And since we're making our yellow light indicate a fault, let's use our yellow light for a reset now. That way we don't have to go here and toggle a bit. So let's start a rung edit there. And let's change left servo reset to local colon one colon i dot data one. That'll be our yellow button. And we'll go ahead and copy that. And let's go over to our right axis. And we might as well put that in while we're at it. So we'll put that here. And we also had our physical axis fault that we put in the one above us. So let's copy that instruction and we'll put it and here as well, and we'll put right axis physical fault. I get that this really functionally does nothing, but this is glaring them at you right away. And now I know to go look over here and figure out why we have an axis fault. And we should be able to hit our yellow button and our yellow light goes out. And now both axes are enabled. It would be really nice to know that both axes are enabled and ready to go. Don't you think so? And let's use the green light to do that. And right now we have an axis data running, which is really interesting because I, I think that's the bit I want to use. But honestly, I don't know a tremendous amount about this bit. So let's right click our axis and go to monitor. 
And let's go find this axis state and see what it's doing right now. I get the feeling this is probably an actual value telling us what's going on, which would be really neat. We could do a lot with it. And honestly, I probably need to dig a little further than this, but I believe that that is tied to this SIP axis state here. And a value of four seems to be good. Now, this one here we're just going to use for experimentation because I could be completely wrong, but mainly what I was trying to find is something that would give us a value instead of a simple one or zero. So in this case, we're going to copy that and we want it to be equal to four when it's good. So let's go to our outputs and we'll bring down another rung and let's go to our compare tab and bring down an EQU. And if this equals four, and don't worry about the fact that the one's in hex and one's a four, in this case, it does not matter. And we are going to go back to our favorites, bring an output energized down. And this is going to be local colon one colon O dot data dot zero. And also don't forget about our right, but here's a good example. See, in this case, we're indicating if we have a fault here or here, well, and this this time we want the green light to be on if this is good and the other is good. And when you say that and word, then you're looking for things to be in series. So in this case, we'll take that left axis SIP axis state and change it to right. And we'll make that a four. And when we finalize that, we get a green light. So now we switch our servo off. We have a fault we need to reset after that. We press our yellow button, and now we know we're ready to enable. In fact, I forgot one, but okay. So here's where it gets tricky. Let's talk, think through how this works now. So we press our E stop. We do get that. Are we ready to go now? And we're not. Okay, so we're not getting an indication off of this yellow. So let's go figure out why. Then it looks like everything is perfectly fine. And so this is going back to a whole other timing issue is we have switch one, but it needs to see a false and then a true again. Now, what I'd like for you to do is just continue going through this and thinking through, okay, what does it actually take? Because in the end, there should be a very repeatable process of why something won't run and you should be able to find the problem. So keep going through it. And if you have a program that you think just is awesome, go ahead and share it with me. And yeah, maybe I'll feature it in an upcoming video. Once you have that done, take some time and go through the basic Studio 5000 instructions and really get familiar with how you can leverage them and make your programs better. And I've created this playlist right here with some great tips.